Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are going to be talking about a disease in rabbits. First off, I want to just apologize quickly for my voice. It's probably a little bit congested and stuffy, so just put up with that for a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, I am hopefully going to start feeling better here soon. I feel actually fine. I just mostly sound crappy, so uh, just, just be patient with that if you can. Now, today's video is about a disease in rabbits uh, called rabbit hemorrhagic disease. And some of you may have seen a little bit about this, may have seen something on the internet, may have seen something even in your local news. It has happened over the last year or so that we've really seen this come into the spotlight again. Now, this disease is impacting wild rabbits, domestic rabbits, uh, some of both, and mostly it's seen in the desert southwest. We're not seeing this too much in the rest of the country at this point. There has been a small outbreak in Florida, but we haven't seen this disease too many other places as of yet. Now, like I said, this has been kind of in the spotlight here for the last year or so. There was originally a strain that was seen in the US that only affected domestic rabbits in the early 2000s. That really was a pretty short outbreak, but it did definitely impact some rabbit owners. Now we're seeing an outbreak of a second strain called rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus 2. And so it's just another strain of a very similar virus. And that disease was first described in France in 2010 and has since spread through Europe, Africa. It's now endemic in Australia, meaning that it's always there. And it has now come to the US, first seen in North America in 2018 up in Canada, uh, specifically in the southwestern part of Canada. In 2019 and in 2020, it started spreading into the US. It was seen in New York City, it was seen in Ohio and in Washington state. Since then, like I said, we've mostly seen it in the southwestern US. Texas, Nevada, Arizona, California, and a couple other states down in that region as well. So what does this disease look like? What kind of symptoms do we expect to see? Well, the most common way that we see this happening is sudden death. Uh, and this is called a paracute infection. Now, paracute just means that it's before acute, meaning that it is just super, super, super fast. And typically, sudden death is all we see. Within 12 to 36 hours of infection, the rabbit is dead. Uh, and this is the most common. Probably 70 to 80% of cases are just sudden death. However, there are a smaller set of infections that are acute, meaning they're pretty fast, not as fast as paracute. These tend to be typically more vague symptoms, such as having lethargy, not wanting to eat, not feeling well in general, just laying around. Some of these cases are going to have hemorrhaging, which can be something like petechial hemorrhaging. It could be overt hemorrhaging. We could start to see just blood in places that we don't normally expect it. Now, petechial hemorrhaging is probably the most common, and that's where we get little tiny bruising marks. And these are like the point of a pen. So tiny, tiny little bruising or red marks in the skin on the conjunctiva, which is like the inside of the eyelids or mucous membranes or like in the mouth. And so those are typically the symptoms that we're going to see. Now, what about transmission? Well, unfortunately, this virus is extremely hardy. And when I say extremely hardy, I mean very, very hardy. It can be seen in the environment for months, uh, three to four months on the carcass of a rabbit that died. And so that's extremely long in terms of virus. For a lot of viruses, we think of minutes or hours in the environment, not days, weeks, or months. And unfortunately, that makes it very hard to get rid of. Being that it can affect wild populations of rabbits in the US, which, which the first strain of rabbit hemorrhagic disease did not, this strain is affecting rabbit populations that are both wild and domestic. And the wild, anything that gets into a wild population is going to be much harder to get rid of than in it only being seen in domestic populations. Because once it's in the wild, it's very hard for us to find all of the positive cases because rabbits like to hide um, and domestic rabbits are mostly accounted for. So it can be spread through basically any body secretions. So respiratory secretions, urine, feces, 
um, just about any secretions that we can think of, as well as just being found in the bodies of dead rabbits. So one of the interesting behaviors of rabbits, especially wild rabbits, is to chew on bones and on carcasses of dead animal. Those carcasses tend to have a lot of calcium, which they tend to be lacking in the wild. And that means that in wild rabbits, this can be spread from wild rabbit to wild rabbit just through dead carcasses. And it is unfortunately a very common mode of transmission. And in domestic rabbits, it can be spread through very similar means. So if you let your rabbits out to go grazing or roaming in your yard, and a rabbit that was infected pooped or peed in your yard, that virus could still be there months later, uh, and your rabbit could get this disease. So, now that we know a little bit about transmission, how can we prevent this disease from happening in domestic rabbits uh, or your pet rabbits? The number one thing you can do is preventing your rabbit if you're in one of these areas that the virus seems to be present right now. Don't let them go outside and graze or roam around in your yard. If your rabbit is an outdoor rabbit, make sure that their hutch is raised off the ground several feet so that they're not gonna be interacting with wild rabbits if possible. If you do visit a place where this outbreak is happening or if you live in an area that this is happening, make sure that you're washing your clothes regularly. Make sure that if you go out and happen to interact with a dead wild rabbit, make sure you're washing your hands, taking a shower, making sure all of your clothes are clean and the bottoms of your shoes. And so a lot of these things are pretty common sense, but I also just wanna make you guys aware that this disease is out there. It's not very common, and so I don't want you to go into a panic thinking, oh no, my rabbit's gonna get this disease. Most likely they're not. Taking some common sense steps to just protect your bunnies can be a really good way to make sure that they don't get this disease. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Stay tuned for more rabbit content that will be coming here in the next couple of weeks. We're trying to get back on a more steady schedule than I have been in the last month or so. Uh, lots of stuff has been going on in my life as you can find out about in my last little short stream. Otherwise, have a fantastic rest of your day guys and we will see you in the next video.